Elon Musk delivered a detailed explanation of SpaceX's Starship program, covering not only its overarching vision, but also the engineering principles behind it, the critical purposes it serves, the significant technical and logistical challenges it faces, and the ambitious future milestones the company aims to achieve. He started with explaining that Starlink operates at a much higher frequency compared to other systems. But the main focus was on why Starship exists. Musk said the goal is to make humanity a multiplanetary species to extend consciousness beyond Earth. There are two main reasons for this. First, to ensure the long-term survival of life and consciousness, reducing the risk of extinction by spreading humanity to multiple planets and eventually to other star systems. And second, to inspire and excite people about the future. Musk emphasized that life cannot be only about solving one problem after another. It should also be about pursuing goals that make life worth living. He believes a spacefaring civilization offers a far more exciting future. Musk praised the SpaceX team for building what he described as the most advanced rocket manufacturing facility ever, located near the Rio Grande and close to a public beach in an area that used to be a sandbar. The facility includes high bays and will soon have a gigabay, one of the largest enclosed spaces on Earth, designed to build and store Starship rockets. The public can view the rockets and factory from the highway, although safety restrictions apply during launches. The long-term goal is to produce thousands of Starships per year to establish a self-sustaining city on Mars. The key milestone will be when Mars can survive without resupply from Earth, even in the event of a major catastrophe or the decline of civilization on Earth. This would require creating full industrial capability on Mars, including not just factories, but the means to build factories. Musk estimated at least a million tons of cargo would need to be delivered to Mars for this goal. He noted the vast age of the universe, 13.8 billion years, and how human civilization, measured from the first writing about 5,500 years ago, is just a tiny fraction of Earth's history. This perspective reinforces the urgency of becoming a multiplanetary species. Musk described Starship's design features. Half of the ship is black due to the heat shield required for re-entry, while the rest is made of a special stainless steel alloy. Steel is chosen over aluminum because it can withstand both rocket engine heat and atmospheric re-entry heat, and it does not require paint, which is difficult to maintain through cryogenic temperature cycles. The Raptor engines are the most advanced engines in the world, capable of producing extreme heat and thrust. Achieving a fully reusable orbital rocket requires advancing technology in every part of the vehicle. Engines, structures, heat shields, and recovery methods. No one has built a fully reusable orbital heat shield before. The space shuttle required nine months of refurbishment after each flight. Starship aims to have a heat shield that can be reused immediately. Both the Starship and the Super Heavy booster will be caught by the launch tower's arms instead of landing on legs. This allows for the fastest possible turnaround between flights, as the booster can be returned to the launch mount within an hour of liftoff. Using legs would require landing elsewhere, stowing the legs, and transporting the rocket back to the pad, adding weight and time delays. The booster will return to the pad within 5 to 6 minutes of launch, with propellant loading taking 30 to 40 minutes, enabling the possibility of flying the same booster again in under an hour. This rapid reuse is key to making Starship economically viable. One of the biggest engineering challenges remaining is the reusable orbital heat shield. Many flights will be needed to identify weak points and improve tile strength, spacing, and underlying materials. SpaceX has successfully brought ships back through the atmosphere for soft landings, but has lost heat shield tiles in the process. The goal is to achieve repeated re-entries without tile loss. Musk also discussed orbital refueling, which will be essential for carrying large payloads to Mars. This involves launching a Mars-bound starship into orbit with cargo, then sending tanker starships to refill its propellant tanks before departure. Although SpaceX has experienced docking with the International Space Station, propellant transfer in orbit has never been done at this scale. Full reusability and orbital refueling are the two main technologies required for building a city on Mars. 
Musk expressed confidence that the SpaceX team will succeed in developing these capabilities, allowing them to transport equipment, build greenhouses, and create a sustainable human presence on Mars. He also stressed the role of humans as stewards of life. Other species cannot leave Earth, so it is humanity's responsibility to preserve life beyond the planet in case of catastrophic events, such as asteroid impacts or the eventual expansion of the sun. Starship could also revolutionize travel on Earth, making it possible to go anywhere in under 40 minutes. For example, flights from Los Angeles to Sydney or Tokyo could take less than 30 minutes, and crossing the Atlantic could take as little as 10 minutes. The vehicle would travel at around 25 times the speed of sound, about 30 times faster than commercial aircraft, offering a much better view as well. Musk concluded by saying the team would check in on the rocket and return to console to monitor launch conditions, thanking supporters for their interest and encouragement. In a seamless continuation of that moment, SpaceX soon achieved a breakthrough milestone with its Starship program. On August 26, 2025, the company completed its 10th test flight of the Starship and Super Heavy system, marking the first success after a series of setbacks earlier in the year. The mission launched from Starbase, Texas, and for the very first time, accomplished dual-controlled water landings. The Super Heavy booster splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico, while Starship landed in the Indian Ocean. One of the key achievements of this test was the deployment of eight mock Starlink satellites using a new PEZ-style dispenser system. As Starship reached suborbital space, the payload bay opened and released the simulators, a crucial demonstration of its capability to carry and deploy satellites. This was the first successful payload deployment in Starship's history, signaling its practical potential for future satellite missions. The re-entry phase marked a significant step forward in Starship's technological maturity, particularly in the area of thermal protection systems. SpaceX used this flight to push the boundaries of heat shield performance, testing a newly refined array of hexagonal heat shield tiles that were specifically engineered for greater durability and multiple flight cycles without replacement. These tiles are designed to withstand the intense thermal loads experienced during high-velocity atmospheric re-entry, where temperatures can soar to thousands of degrees Celsius. The company is aiming to avoid the costly, time-consuming refurbishment processes seen in earlier reusable spacecraft. Although the re-entry test revealed areas for improvement, such as partial melting of a section of the aft skirt and structural stress on one of the aerodynamic control flaps, the overall result was encouraging. All primary systems, from structural integrity to flight control, remained operational from entry through landing signaling that the vehicle's reusability potential is steadily increasing and moving closer to the rapid turnaround times that are essential for high-frequency missions. The importance of this successful re-entry represents a psychological and strategic win for SpaceX and its supporters. Earlier in the year, the Starship program faced multiple setbacks, including flight anomalies and incomplete mission objectives which had raised doubts among critics about the viability of the company's aggressive test-to-failure development model. This flight, however, delivered a clear rebuttal to those doubts. By not only surviving re-entry, but also maintaining operational performance across all key systems, SpaceX has shown that its iterative testing strategy is capable of producing tangible, high-impact progress. The mission's results have renewed confidence in the Starship design among both internal teams and external stakeholders, including NASA, which is counting on Starship for the Artemis lunar landing missions. With this performance milestone achieved, the program edges closer to supporting not only lunar expeditions, but also its far more ambitious long-term goal, enabling sustained human presence on Mars. Importantly, the mission also showcased in-space engine relighting, another pivotal advancement. Starship successfully reignited one of its Raptors while in space, demonstrating one of the key steps needed for sustained orbital operations and precise flight control during descent. Alongside satellite deployment and splashdown, this maneuver highlights major progress across the vehicle's mission profile. Looking ahead, SpaceX is already planning more frequent and capable test flights. 
CEO Elon Musk envisions a future where Starship flies more than 24 times in 24 hours, enabled by the rapid reusability demonstrated in this latest launch, though he considers that projection feasible in the next six to seven years. Meanwhile, SpaceX is advancing development of Starship version 3, V3, for rollout by year's end, and version 4, a larger variant, targeted for 2027. These efforts aim to further scale up payload capacity and reduce costs for Moon and Mars missions.